Billy twins, both of them is anti-Genesis. They are anti-God. No belief in God whatsoever. Let's continue. Now we know that the Britannica says that the Illuminati was a short-lived organization and their goal was to introduce or replace Christianity with a religion of reason. Now we know that it was not a short-lived movement. But their goal was to replace Christianity with a religion of reason. And so, brothers and sisters, we can see that the goals and the principles of the Illuminati was active in the French Revolution. That ideology, that power that made an attack upon the word of God during the French Revolution was simply an instrument of the Illuminati. And the, and the word Illuminati itself tells us, speaks volume to us because Illuminati, enlightened ones. We know that the 1600s brought into, in, into Revelation a period called the Enlightenment of the Age of Reason. And so, brothers and sisters, back in Genesis, when the, when, 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 when the serpent told Eve, your eyes shall be open. He's simply saying your eyes shall be enlightened. So we can see, saints, that this is nothing but an instrument of Satan, the Illuminati. And so, saints, when we look at this, this atheism is simply, looking at the screen now, an open avowed war, uh, an agency by Satan to make an open avowed war upon the word of God, and it is nothing but Illuminism. This atheism is Illuminism, and Illuminism have a broader scope. Because when we say atheism, we simply narrow it in. When we, we call, speak of someone being an atheist, we speak of someone that's openly just atheist. But Illuminism is a more subtle uh, belief of the same thing. You remember, Satan is more subtle. I mean, he's more artful. He's more cunning, and he's more crafty. And he, he, he has the ability to charm you, to cheat you, and to lead you by deception. And so, brothers and sisters, I want to make sure that we start off on here on solid ground. We start on the same page that this, this, uh, this, 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 this king of the south is the sixth head of Revelation 17 chapter. It is the beast from the bottomless pit of Revelation 11 chapter. It is the new manifestation of satanic power to make open of our war upon the word of God. It came out of the French Revolution. It went to the east as communism. It went to the west as secular humanism. Let's continue, saints. We are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. I want, to, I want to talk on that for a moment. We are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. God himself lays down this principle in Isaiah 42. And we want to go back to for, for one moment. Isaiah 42.9. Lord, please be with us as we study your word. Isaiah chapter 42, and I pray and plead with you, get your Bibles, and please get a King James Bible. As we, as we talked last time, if you have an NIV, don't use it. Do not use it. Isaiah 42.9, the Bible says, Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Here, God is simply saying, check me out. The former things, which the things in the past, have come to pass, just as I said they were going to come to pass. And new things do I declare before they spring forth, I'll tell you. Them. What are the new things? The new things, brothers and sisters, are prophecy. And so what God is saying, check me out and see, didn't those things in the past take place just as I said they were? If those things took place, then you can have faith to believe that the things that are yet to take place are going to take place. So Jesus, the Bible says, that, behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things do I declare before they spring forth, I tell you. The Bible continues to tell us in 2 Peter, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto we do well that we take heed as unto a light that shines into a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in our own heart. Knowing this, and no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecies came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God. We can put our faith in it. Let's continue, saints. So we are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to see in history now the fulfillment of prophecy. Now we all remember this 
chart here, this map. We all remember this from some time back. Back in when we were talking about the king of the north and the king of the south, the geographical king of the north and the geographical king of the south. We look at this map, we look up at the top, and we see the Seleucids of Syria, and this was deemed the king of the north. We look down at the bottom, down in Egypt, the Ptolemies, the Ptolemies, and we get the king of the south. And in between these two kings, in between the, these two kings, the geographical territory between these two kings was a place called Jerusalem, and the Bible calls this little bit of real estate the glorious land. That's the glorious land. Now, saints, I don't want to lead you. I don't want to do as Satan to lead you and to charm you and to cheat you. I want you to see this for yourself. So I want you to look at this. Pause the, 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 the DVD if you need to. I want you to see this for yourself. Here we have the geographical king of the north, the Seleucids, up in Syria. We have the, the king of the south down in Egypt, the Ptolemies. And in between, we have the glorious land, which is Jerusalem. This was the geographical location. Now we know, as, as we went through Daniel 11 in uh, DVD number 2, we discovered, brothers and sisters, that the territory of the king of the north changed hands from Syria to pagan Rome to paper Rome. It ended up in the hands of paper Rome in Daniel 11.31. And from Daniel 11.31 down to Daniel 11.39, we have the activity of the papers of the king of the north. In Daniel 11.40, all of a sudden, this king of the south attacks the king of the north. Now, we know historically from our study that Egypt, the geographical king of the south, ceased to exist as a power way back in 31 BC when Augustus Caesar, Octavia, defeated Mark Anthony and Cleopatra at the Battle of Actium. So in 31 BC, there is no more geographical king of the south. And so our goal was to find out who was this entity that attacked the king of the north in 1798. And we have now discovered who that king was. But Another point. Back then, when the king of the north and the king of the south was fighting back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, Jerusalem, history says, was just a byword. They had lost their distinctiveness. They were, had been so disobedient that they were just a byword in, among the nations of that time. And so they found themselves yielding to whatever power ruled the world at that time. When the king of the north was the ruling power, then the Jews, Jerusalem, found themselves paying tribute to the king of the north. When the king of the south mustered up enough power to go back and attack the king of the north, then the Jews found themselves having to pay tribute to the king of the south. And so this back and forth went, went on for years because, they had, because of the fact, brothers and sisters, that they were spiritually weak, they were also military weak, and God would not come to their rescue. Are you with me, saints? Now, when we get down to, down to 1140, we have a spiritual king of the north, which is a papacy, and we have a spiritual entity, the king of the south, that attacks the king of the north. Are you with me, saints? So we have now moved from a geographical location to a spiritual entity. Are you with me, saints? Now, we have discovered, let's go to Daniel 1140 real quick. Daniel 1140, let's go there, saints. Daniel 1140. We are studying the word of God. Let's look at Daniel 11.40. Get your Bibles. Don't, don't trust me to read it to you correctly. Get your Bible. And the Bible says in Daniel 11.40, And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen, and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. Here we see, saints, that the king of the south attacks the king of the north in a minister of the deadly wound in 1798. Now, we know historically that the papacy did not have any power to make a counterattack upon the king of the south anywhere around 1798. As a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, we know historically that once the papacy received the daily wound in 1798, it began to go down, down, down. It went into total obscurity. 
As a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, in 18, let me see, 1870,